Hello Ace Runners and welcome to the back nine of day two at the 2023 MVP Open presented by OTB Dis. Coverage brought to you by Ace Run Pro and this is our second and last Disc Golf Pro Tour playoff event of the season. My name's Holly Finley. And I am Raven Klein. We have brought you the back nine and you are looking fine. We are at Maple Hill in Leicester, Massachusetts and ready to catch up with our chase card for the final nine. Quick glance at the leaderboard through the front half. Haley King taking over the lead from Evelina with six down total so far, but they still have a lot of holes to play, so I'm excited to see that battle. Hole 10, also known as the Castle Hole, uphill, par three, 266 feet. There's no out of bounds to worry about, but this is a difficult shot. If you land in the woods on the left, you might not be able to scramble for par. Also, if it's windy and you turn it over to the trees on the right, sometimes there's not a line to get up and down for par either. So really, it's better to land in the fairway, even if it's a bit short, get up and down. See if anyone can get up there for a look at a birdie too. Missy Gannon up first. And her shot is pulled over to the right side Christmas trees. I know there was a pretty sizable headwind when a lot of the early carts had come through, and it looks like that's still the case here. Yes, Missy and I both decided to disc up a bit. Lisa pulling a little to the right, but with good stability, and she's going to be in the fairway. That's a great shot. Probably shorter than maybe what she wanted, but being in the fairway in this wind is definitely what you want. Jessica shot a little early and left, and she kicks down in that set of trees. And now she's looking at a forehand roller from the knees. Oh, dang it. Unfortunately hits the trees again and does not make it out. And Weiss with a forehand Annie hits the front of the wall in a very fortunate kick down. And even though you're right at the wall, it's still not an easy putt. It's very uphill. Very nice. Ooh. That was kind. <laughs> that was, yeah. Missy Gannon scooches between the tree and the wall. And Lisa Fakus for a two, just a bit short. I'm looking at a birdie two from 50 feet. And the wind pulls it just a little right. This is Weiss for four. Oh, left side cage doesn't really even touch any of the chain. But she'll have a tap in double. Lisa in for par. Being that close to the wall, I mean, it feels, oh, I'm right here, but Luckily, Missy was on that side where the wall's a little lower, so yeah. she could do her normal putt, and Jess was forced for that upside down like waffle. Yes. Yeah, and which is so hard in the wind. Right. But when you're when you're that close to the wall, you don't have a lot of other options. In for par for Holly, and. It's surprising with the distance on this hole, but it actually was the third hardest, and there were zero birdies on the hole today. Wow. Moving on, we have hole 11, par four, 666 feet. You are throwing over all of these beautiful Christmas trees. The ideal landing zone is the one spot without the trees. So this open green space, a lot of shots, I would say get just to the front end. If you can really pump one out, you can get to the bubble, leaving you with a shorter approach into the basket here. I recommend the right side around your second shot because if you do turn something over, you have all the younger trees. So they're shorter, you can see over them. There's not as much in your way. 
Good advice, and I agree. Missy Gannon with a right side shot. It's lower than the tip of the tallest trees, and she does hit those and knock down a little earlier than you'd want. <clears throat> oh, I love the height on that. Heisering into the open. Almost. Almost to the opening. Just a little shy, but you look like at least you don't have like a big tree right in your stance. Lisa shot starts out on Heiser with an aggressive left finish, and she's over in those taller trees. I would consider that the most common error is not really choosing the right stability or reading the wind correctly and ending up on the left side. A lot of people have step out forehands from here or just pitch to the opening. Look at this shot Missy <laughs> has. No real run up, so she's forced to a sidearm. And she progresses up the fairway. She'll play the hole for par. Lisa just pitching out to the opening, which is a great idea. I mean, it's a par four. So if your first shot isn't perfect, the par is not that hard to scramble. Ooh. Well, that was fun. Turned over a little <laughs> earlier than I wanted, but it landed in the path, so that worked out okay. And Weiss also does not have a run-up being on the left side. It goes for a forehand, gets a bit of a roll at the end. Was she trying to roll it, or did it just never flatten? I'm actually not sure. <laughs> but either way, she's got a circle to look at a birdie. This is Lisa's third shot, looking to play the hole for par. What a shot. And she is 15 to 18 feet from the basket. And you can see, just like Raven said, on the left side, the trees are bigger. So landing on the right, a little bit smaller. But Missy's able to get her up shot inside the circle. 20 foot putt for par. Good distance after two shots for you. I like just being able to pitch something up in front of the basket. It's a great birdie. You know, it's it's out there. If you can execute your first shot, everyone in this field has has the birdie in them. But I feel like a lot of people just have to scramble. Missy Ooh. Gannon for par, and the wind gets a hold of that one, and she goes long behind the basket. A Missy for a five, and it's in. Jessica Weiss makes good for the par. Really good scramble from Lisa Fakus. I love your putt. It's so fast. <laughs> Just a laser. In for the par. Still waiting. I mean, it's only been two holes, but still waiting for a birdie for this chase card on the back nine. And Holly, the only player under par. Hole 12, par 4, 525 feet. Off the tee, you can do a straight shot, or you can do an ante, or you can do a hyzer over the tips of the trees on the right. Either way, you want to line yourself up with this gap so you can get a second shot down into the green and have a look at a birdie three. If you hyzer out to left, oftentimes you're forced just to play the hole for par. And this is a new teeing position for us this year. I'm up first. Oh, that's a great flex line. If it's, it's hard to have a quote-unquote bad tee shot on this one, but it all depends on how you want to approach your second shot. Mm -hmm. So if you want 
a backhand may be something easier. You're going to try and get a little bit more left. Or if you want, for, you know, it really does depend on the player. Lisa Fakus with a massive rip getting to the edge of the woods. Jessica Weiss lines herself up with the gap nicely. Missy with a slightly straighter shot. That's holding really nicely. And she'll be just a little left. Jessica Weiss's longtime friend and Northeast resident Pickle on the bag for her today. Didn't really see how her disc reacted off of those trees. Um, I personally like where you are better, getting to throw that downhill the whole way, where if you're on the left side, you have to throw over the crest of the hill and then get the disc to drop. You kind of slid down to that right side. Missy in good position, getting to throw something slower that's just gonna glide down the hill. Beautiful shot from Missy. <laughs> Lisa Fakus a little more on the left side and a few gaps to choose from. And she hits one perfectly. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Lisa looking at a birdie. Kudos there to the uh, active spotter <laughs> jumping out of the way. Jessica Weiss's third shot. And now this is her fourth shot. A little forehand touch, pitching up to the basket for her bogey. She'll still have about 20 feet. Missy Gannon for birdie from 45. Ooh. The line was there, but not enough height on Missy's putt, so she'll be tapping in a par. Just a little low on my putt. I was hoping for a headwind lift. Lisa Fakus for birdie from 35. Oh, Also just short off the front. Jessica Weiss is in for a bogey. In for the par. And Lisa will also card a par. And Gannon in for par. That would be Missy, not Burr. Good clarification. <laughs> Did you see their uh, world mixed doubles? They were a team. Oh, yeah, Missy Gannon Burr. Isn't that perfect? I love it. I, <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> Hole 13, par 3, 472 feet. A downhill shot with a late tunnel that you have to hit. Most common error is turning something into this right side group of trees. I do find that to be a harder place. So if you can either throw a mint that's going to glide in, hit the ground and slide up toward the basket, or I know I personally like a less stable fairway. I do like a hyzer flip down the left side and I think it just has a great flight. Not a terribly uncommon place to be getting through the trees and leaking toward hole 14's tee pad. Lisa Fakus plays the hole <clears throat> about, I can't say I've seen anyone else play it this way. She just does a hyzer right to the mm -hmm. opening. Sometimes she gets in the opening and sometimes it's right in front of it. <clears throat> and I'd say most of the time she's able to scramble for par and I've watched her play 
this hole that way for many years. Seeing a lot of air bounces within that last 50 to 100 feet before people hit the gap. And it's, I mean, this is really all about your angle control, throwing downhill and with a wind and trying to get something that just doesn't leak to the right side. Weiss throws a mid off the tee and gets through that center section of trees. And this is Weiss's second shot. Oh, well, that's perfect. This is a very touchy green. They've built up a small retaining wall behind the basket, so that's a new bonus feature for us this year. Missy Gannon's second shot. And she'll have a par putt. And Lisa Fakus is in a similar position as Missy. A bit more height on hers. And she's nice saved shot. by the wall. Yeah. Little patent pending for you. That's, oh, just cut a root? Yeah, I must have hit a rock and then rolled back in the ditch. I actually thought I was on the top. <laughs> for par? And just a bit outside. And there's no real putt on this one, so I'm just going to have to lay it up. Looks like even the layup is a little tricky. It was. All right. <laughs> Oh, great putt from Missy. I'm just going to assume that all the cheering in the background was for her putt, not for... <laughs> Lisa in for par. And we in for par. I'll drop in for a five here on the 13th. There was only one birdie here today, and that'd be my commentary partner, Raven Klein. Tell us what you threw. I threw a Supreme Escape on a Heiser flip up, and I had an eight foot putt. Ooh. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Hole 14, par four, 292 feet, a lovely but sometimes intimidating shot. Wasn't too windy here today, so I'd say you wouldn't have to alter your disc choice that you came up with during your practice days. A nice hyzer over the water, let it finish at the basket, hopefully with an ace run. I've seen some players just be a little more conservative and try to play right up along the water's edge, not wanting to hang their disc out over the water for too long. Also, you can just throw straight at the basket and hyzer aggressively left if you don't want to play for the birdie. Lisa's shot looks like she didn't like maybe how hyzered it was. I don't know. She didn't seem yeah. ecstatic about it, but it's a birdie putt. I think sometimes players plan on going a little more aggressive, and they'll release it, and they're like, well, it's safe. It's fine. You're <laughs> right. And then they turn around because, you know, they almost know out of their hand. They're like, well, I'm going to be pitching up for the three. <laughs> right. And Missy Gannon's up there putting for birdie. <laughs> Weiss goes long up against the wall. I like how long her disc went straight. Me too. I mean, really nice flight. I like your shot with the height as well because you don't get as much of the flare skip that Lisa and Missy got. Do you go fairway? High speed driver. Oh, okay. Missy Gannon for birdie from 38. Oh, off the that's front a great of the cage. run. Very brave. I love it. Jessica Weiss for birdie from 38. Yes. Beautiful putt from Jess. I love the height adjustment on that. Run it back. A 
about as safe of a bid as you can like go for it. I love that height. I'm trying to decrease the the error. Oh, we missed it. She made Lisa it Fakus for birdie. Just oh. a bit right side, and the putter trickles into the water. We did have boards along the water edge last year. Great birdie putt for Holly. We. Um, they took the boards away. <laughs> <laughs> that one, you know, could have been caught for Lisa last mm -hmm. year with the boards. And they decided to make it more fun this year. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the paywall like cardboard? The paywall. Yeah, they had the cardboard up. And oh, everyone had, like, right. mixed feelings about it. Because, because sometimes some people you couldn't water through. skip in. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And they got rid of it. <laughs> I forgot about those. Yeah. Missy in for par. What a shot by Simon. What a veteran play by Simon. Beautiful part. Great part. I'm blown away. Your champion at the Great Lakes Open, Simon Lazat. Hole 15, par 3, 322 feet. Off the tee, there is a main line right through the middle. You will find that late flight, it's more open on the right side. So if you have something that can get the full turn, that's great. Really what you want to avoid is hitting that obviously an early tree and kicking to the left side where you're down in the gully. But if you have a straight flyer and you can push toward the basket, it's a very fast ground and you can get a lot of play toward the basket. Jessica Weiss up first. She throws a Valkyrie right down Ooh. the middle. Still good. Yep, she'll have a birdie putt. I feel like on the flyover, it looked like more trees to me <laughs> than it does off the tee. Oh yeah, keep going. Keep turning. <laughs> Is it just cute? Look at you! That was a great shot and even good ground play at the end. The tree that Missy just hit, I think, is the most common tree to hit on this hole. Yeah, Missy kicks uh, right side, makes it about halfway down. Lisa hits the fairway. She's in circle two. Gannon scrambling for par from the right side mm. and does not make it out of the woods. Now she'll be playing for bogey. A patent pending backhand for Missy, but she's up in the circle now. Fake is for birdie. She'll have a drop in par. Weiss for birdie. Ooh, do it. <laughs> Overruns the basket a little too high, and she'll have, what, 25 feet for comeback? Great birdie, Holly. I like to look at it as if I've erased the double from two holes ago. There you go. I do, I do also keep that in my mind. If I take something like that and I get a couple birdies, I'm like, and that one is gone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Weiss in for the par. And Missy Gannon will drop in her bogey putt. I appreciate that she still takes a second to, you know, compose herself, even though it's what a lot of us would consider like that tap in distance. Maybe even with your bag still on. Yeah. In Lisa. a casual round, for sure your bag's definitely, on. Definitely, definitely in a casual round. Lisa also cards the par for hole 15. I love that birdie. It's a fun <laughs> one. Hole 16, par 3, 364 feet. It is very windy today on this hole. 
If you have a nice shot shaping disc that can hold on to a turnover angle, that would be preferred here. You can throw a straight shot right over the top of that rock wall, get anywhere near this bridge and have a circle two putt. If your disc doesn't hold that turnover angle, you can hyzer out into the marshy area and still have a circle one or a circle two bid at birdie. And we do have out of bounds on the left side if you hyzer out or misfire. Because of the headwind, I changed my disc and I've made it pin deep, but on the left side, I'll be playing the hole for par. Oh, this is a beautiful shot from Jessica Weiss. Getting great distance, she'll hyzer out around the creek is what it looked like. I love the shot shape on that. Yeah. It's interesting. Oh. Lisa with an early release and hits that left tree, but still gets a lot of forward momentum. That was kind of wild. <sighs> Missy looking like she's trying to flip something up, but never commits to like the full turn. She catches a tree and lands in the fairway. This is Lisa's second shot. It's interesting off the tee, oh, early tree again for Lisa. Uh, it looks like you want to turn something over, but you actually want a little bit of that stability so that you can come out at the end of the flight. But it's deceptive. Missy's second shot. And she's given herself a par putt from Circle's Edge. Maybe a little closer. Lisa's forehand approach. She didn't sound like she liked it very much, but she still has a putt for, to save bogey. Looked like an uncomfortable stance. Yeah, I was just <laughs> smash myself in between the bushes. <laughs> Got it as close as possible. And Jessica pitches up. She'll play for par. I feel like she's had two or three today on those higher approaches where it just seems like it's not popping off her hand like it normally does. Lisa Fakus making Great good putt. for the bogey. You can see that flag really starting to move. Holly mentioned that in the flyover. It was pretty windy as you get to these final three holes. Good par putt for you, Holly. Jessica Weiss in for an easy par. Those high putts make me a little bit nervous when you've got that wind coming in because I've seen them catch the high chain and then just push out. <laughs> Moving on to hole 17, par 4, 433 feet off the tee right away you have a very small gap between those trees. It can get in a lot of players' heads. You're trying to push something straight out toward the top of the hill, maybe aiming for the DGN, DGPT signs. The further straight you can get, the better lined up you are for your second shot. You do not want to go too right too early. They have pulled in the OB on this left side, and that really only comes into play on your second shot. And then to make it extra fun, we have an elevated pin on the edge of a rock wall. I love extra fun. Who doesn't? <sighs> and it's a little windy, and I sort of do a little miss angle on the throw there. <laughs> I end up on the right side, and that is pinched off. Yeah, there are, I would say, maybe one or two spots on the right where if you're already in there, you can get through. But if you can go around, I recommend it. <laughs> Jessica Weiss hyzers out with a forehand, and she's about two feet away from me on the right side. And Lisa Fakus hits the gap beautifully, and she's high and left. Ideal positioning for her. Missy Gannon, it's a little low, but it's actually pushes really far, and she's left side in perfect position as well. A 
nice little touch backhand turnover from Missy. Leaves herself a little bit short, and on any other hole, you know, I'm, I know she would go for it no matter what. I'm curious oh. to see if she'll run it on this one. I just saw Lisa kicked off a tree that was headed to the OB. So remember in yesterday's coverage, we saw Katrina end up over here. Yep. And I watched her go for it, and I thought it was stupid. Well, look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. Here I am going for the shot. But after I saw Jess do it, and, you know, from that angle, <laughs> <laughs> there actually is a little well, window. If you're in there, mm -hmm. there are, like I said, there's like two little windows. It's just if you're not already in there, I think it's crazy to try and cut the corner. Um, making a smart decision, laying up on this one. It's a bold putt if you're going to go for it. And we love bold putts. Oh, Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you," she says to the rock. That's a yeah, she hit the rock and rolled uphill towards uphill the toward the basket. I don't. That's like a I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket kind of day. Missy giving it a bit, but leaves it low and hits the cage. Love that she went for it. I thought Lisa was much further down, and she's <laughs> like, "I'm just gonna go, alley oop." Just kidding. <laughs> Lisa drops it in for the par. Thanks to a uh, little tip from Katrina's round yesterday. I make good for the par, as does Weiss. If I didn't see Katrina make the par yesterday from doing that, I would not have went through the woods. Wow. Missy rounds out the card for all pars. Welcome back, hole 18, a par four, 479 feet. We have one Mando here, you saw it on the left. Rock wall on the right is out of bounds. Can send your tee shot with maximum distance if you want, or be a little more conservative just to keep it safe. Your second shot is where the real decisions come into play. Are you gonna lay it up to this little safe area and play the hole for par? Or are you going to try to make the island on your second shot and play for the birdie three? What do you do? I always play the hole for par. Unless I have some miraculous drive with the most perfect positioning. Okay. So your drive leaked a little bit right, but you caught a tree. Did you just drop straight down? I did. Okay. And Weiss Heiser's out very close to the OB line on the left. I sort of love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the further left you can push barring the one pine tree that's over on the side, leaves you with a much straighter approach into the green if you're feeling like you wanna go for it. Lisa also hugs the right side for her drive, which as far as I'm concerned, takes out the three entirely. It does. I mean, if someone wants to prove me wrong, go for it. I would love to see it. You won't do it. You won't, bet you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Missy Gannon with a nice backhand hyzer. She's in good position to play it safe or go for it. The one major change from this hole uh, for last year is that the OB has been brought in a lot, so the layup is more difficult. Much thinner landing zone. And my layup just goes one disc OB worth. You should have told me not to say that before you threw. You knew God, it was going to happen. <laughs> Lisa Vegas opting for a standstill forehand short of the area I went OB. And she is safe. That she rock is a good reference. It's the corner of where they have that OB 90 degree angle. Jessica Weiss looking to get up to the island for a birdie. And oh, just a little short. That looks nice. 
she'll have to proceed to the drop zone. Did she cross the island? No. Oh, okay. I can't tell. Is Missy going for it? Missy was oh, going wow. for it and landed just short. So this is Lisa Fakus' third shot. Over the corner. That was brave. Yeah, I, I love to see that. Ooh. I like that, too. <laughs> I wish it wasn't following an OB stroke, but I really like that shot. Missy giving it a run there. She'll be inside the bullseye. See, that one came out of her hands, mm -hmm. like the way I'm used to seeing for Weiss. A lot more power, a lot more spin. And I'm in for a bogey five here on the 18th. Lisa Fakus in for par. Missy Gannon in for the bogey. As and is Jessica Weiss. <laughs> nice shooting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With that wind, I even is a, a really nice score out here today. It's a fun day at Maple Hill. Take a look at the leaderboard. Evelina still yeah, she in was first. down what the three strokes after we checked in from the front nine she was able to get those back she and Haley King tied Kristen Tatar shooting five down today and to get into Scoggins. that second place yeah Kristen Tatar 1030 unofficial rated I think so yeah and own Scoggins will take the last place on the lead card for tomorrow appreciate you guys tuning in to this day two of the MVP open if you'd like to support me, you can go to PharmaCBD.com and use code HOLLY for 20% off all PharmaCBD products. And if you'd like to support me, I had a jersey drop yesterday. You can go to Under Par Apparel and find the Raven Klein jersey. It's only open for one week to order. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you tomorrow.